welcome to Calling All Kids. I'm Jennifer Temple, your storyteller today. And I'm so excited. I have three special friends that are joining me for our story today. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. My name's Jenna. My name is Sarah. My name is Bobby. Well, I'm so happy to have you at home watching. And I'm so happy to have Jenna, Sarah, and Bobby with us today. We're going to read a special story for Black History Month. Did you know that February is Black History Month? Yes, and we're going to read about a very famous black man who started to make some amazing changes in Major League Baseball. Are you ready to read and find out? Yeah. All right, let's see what our story is today. The name of our story is Testing the Ice, a true story about Jackie Robinson. And it is written by Sharon Robinson. And the illustrations are written by Kadar Nelson. Gorgeous pictures. And you can even see, here's a picture of Jackie Robinson in his Dodgers uniform. The Dodgers was, is a major league baseball team. So let's see what the story's about. All right, testing the ice. I wonder what that means, testing the ice. Yeah. Do you think they're giving them like a test like we have in school? No. no. What do you think that might be? Testing the ice and it's outside. Hmm. What do you think, Sarah? Um, it may be they're, they're try they're seeing if the lake is frozen enough to, for them to go skating. Yes, I think you're right. Because you don't want to go on the ice if it's not safe, right? Yeah. Bobby, do you want to add something? Why on the back is there a picture of baseball? Right, is that a little confusing? Yeah. Testing the ice and then we see a baseball player? Well, let's read and find out because I'm sure the book will tell us why we have both pictures. So here's a little background information. The year was 1955. Dad was in his ninth season with the, jo the Brooklyn Dodgers. And for the third time in four years, they faced the New York Yankees in the World Series. When my father stole home in the first game, Yogi Ber Berra, the Yankee catcher, screamed, he's out. The Empire, however, shouted, he's safe. It took seven games, but the Brooklyn Dodgers finally beat the New York Yankees. Now, the New York Yankees are another baseball team. So if you don't, do you know that, Bobby, about that? Are they that? really good? They are pretty good. Yes, they are. They tend to go to the, the playoffs a lot. Oh, how we celebrated. They were so happy they finally won. And here's Jackie Robinson when he was playing on the Dodgers, how he slid into home, pla into home plate and got the winning run. So let's find out. So now we're going back and hearing a little bit more about Jackie Robinson. Earlier that same year, my family moved from Queens, New York City to Cascade Road in Stamford, Connecticut. Those are right next to each other, the states. Our new house sat in the middle of six acres on a narrow, twisted road named for the waterfall at the end of it. The best part, according to my father, was the woods on three sides of our house, which screened us from passing cars and curious strangers. Because he was quite popular, and so people wanted to see what he was up to because he was a famous baseball player. But to my brothers, Jackie Jr. and David and me, the best parts were our new friends, Candy, Willie, and Christy, and the lake that ran from our yard to our neighbor's yard, a whole quarter mile away. We spent our first summer playing by the lake. We had picnics, we swam, and we rowed our boats. But no matter how much we begged, my dad, who was Jackie Robinson, my dad would never come into the water. So this book is written by Jackie Robinson's daughter. He would never go in the water. Why do you think he wouldn't go in the water with them? Do you have any idea? Do you th what do you think, Sarah? Uh, it said the lake, so me in lakes have fish, so maybe he's allergic to fish. Yeah, maybe he's allergic to fish or scared of the fish. Any other ideas? Should we keep reading and find out? Yeah. Okay. Aren't the pictures gorgeous? Mm -hmm. So here's a picture of Jackie Robinson. How our friends loved playing inside our house. 
Our playroom had a pool table and a soda fountain and a huge gray boulder that was built into the wall so they could climb it. And while we took it all for granted, our friends made a big deal and fuss over dad's trophy room. They would stand and stare adoringly at his plaques, his silver bat, the signed baseballs, and dad's bronze college football cleat. And they asked him questions in ways we never thought to ask him. Then one rainy Saturday morning over a game of Monopoly, they got dad talking about his historic entry into the major league baseball. So now this is the part. So let's find out why he was so famous about being a baseball player. So this is going back in time when he first started. Baseball, like most America, was segregated. Dad began, Major League Baseball was for whites only. Black and brown skinned players had to play in the Negro Leagues. Some of the greatest baseball players were not white. They were denied entry into the major leagues just because of the color of their skin. Now we've talked about that. Is that fair? No. Just because of the color of your skin doesn't mean what you, who you are inside, and it's right? It's not bad luck. It's just the color of your skin that you got born from. It's That's not like right. a problem. Right, and it's not who you are inside, yeah, right? It doesn't matter if you have black skin or brown skin. All that matters is that you're kind. I love it, Jenny. Jenny, absolutely. Finding food worth eating. So now if you're in the Negro League, they had a hard time finding food when the team traveled around to play. Or to, for even a restaurant to serve them food was a daily problem. In many places we played, there was no hotel that would allow black people. That was just the way things were back in 1945. And no one expected them to ever change. Are they changed a little bit today? Yeah. Yes, quite a bit today, right? Yes. I was playing for the Monarchs when Branch Rickey approached me. He told me he could get me into the Brooklyn Dodgers baseball team, which is the major leagues. I know you're a good ball player, said Mr. Rickey, but do you have the guts to do this? The next few minutes were tough as Ricky warned me that I would be called all kinds of names, not kind names at all. I would be threatened and I probably would be attacked physically. The next question he asked startled me even more. Could I take all of this and still control my temper? So if people are calling you names and being mean to you, do you think that would be kind of hard to control your anger? Like, why are you getting mad at me? You know, like, it would be really hard. So Jackie had to think, hmm, could I do that? I thought, and I thought, the doors opening for black players to play in the major leagues could depend on my decision now. There was only one answer. I'll do it said Jackie Robinson. So now Jackie's going to go and play on a big major league baseball team and he's going to be the only black man. So here he is. Playing that first spring was tough, especially the game between the Dodgers and the Phillies. That's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Some fans cheered me. Others shouted insults that were so bad I had to struggle to keep my temper from exploding. After seven scoreless innings, we got the Phillies out in the eighth inning, and it was our turn at bat. The insults were coming, so all the fans are yelling not nice things to Jackie. I lined, so he hit the ball, and I lined it into the center field for a single then took my lead. I cut out for second base. The Phillies pitcher threw wide. The ball bounced past the shortstop. I rounded third base and I made it home. That was a sweet victory. So he won. After everyone calling him all these names, is he proving that, hey, 
it doesn't matter the color of your skin, right? Yeah. It's about your ability, right? Yeah. All right, let's keep seeing. Oh, this is all the kids in the neighborhood listening. We all sat there wide-eyed, listening to every word. My dad was amazing, I thought. Guess you showed Mr. Ricky that you had guts, Candy said. Did he have guts, Jackie yeah. Robinson? I'm going to do this, even though everyone's yelling at me. Sure did, Jackie Jr. replied proudly. That's why he won the first Rookie of the Year award. That's a big thing. So if you're, it's your first year playing baseball, you might get a big award called Rookie of the Year. So that was really big, and they gave it to a black man. Isn't that an exciting victory? Yay! And the Most Valuable Player Award, too. Willie added, bet you'll even get into the Hall of Fame someday. Dad wasn't much into bragging, but I caught his lips curling up at the side. What do you think he was getting ready to do? If your lips are curling up on the side. He was smiling. Do you think he was kind of proud yeah. what they were saying? Dad retired after, after the 1956 season in a surprise move that shocked his fans. But he didn't stop there. So is he starting to make way now for black players to come into the major league? Yes. But after baseball, Dad, Jackie Robinson, took a job as vice president of a popular coffee company. He wrote books and he walked in protest and marches along with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Do you remember? We've talked about Martin Luther King. And you also said he would be in the book. Yes. And he raised money for civil rights movements. And best of all, he was home more with his family. So he didn't have to be away so much. When you're a baseball player, you travel a lot. Wow. Sarah, do you have a question? Yeah, but I'm wondering if the story will ever tell something about skating. Because on the cover, there's a picture about skating. And we haven't heard anything about that yet. Sarah, I was just thinking the same thing. It's called testing the ice. But we haven't talked anything about ice or skating. Do you think we're getting to that part? Yeah. yeah. What do you and think, Bobby? It's like it's, um, it's the summertime now. So there, we may not be at the winter yet to yeah, talk about. Yeah. Let's see. Really? What do you think? Um, when he's sliding to home base, that he pretends that's the ice. So maybe they're doing a comparison between sliding into yeah, like home plate and ice skating. These are brilliant answers. Well, we'll, Let's pro well, we'll probably find out at the end of the book if Bobby's right or if the ice is going to ever show up. Yes, but I love how you're thinking and already taken the information you have, let's keep going and see what happens. With Dad home, we did more as a family. The lake provided us with the most fun through every season of the year. In the spring, we watched fro frog eggs hatch into tadpoles. We fished, rode the boats to sandbars, and captured turtles napping in the sun. Can you see that? But Dad stayed dry on the shoreland. Hmm. In the summer, we challenged ourselves to swim across the width of the lake. But Dad cheered us from the safety of the sandy shore. No matter how hard we pressed Dad, he always found a reason not to get into the water. I wonder why Jackie Robinson won't get into the water. Sarah, do you have an idea? Yeah, I think it's because on the he's thinking about winter a little, and he thinks that's the ice. Oh, let's keep reading and see. I love how you're thinking. In the winter, the lake froze. My brothers and I huddled in the living room with our parents as we listened to the eerie sounds the frozen lake made. It howled and moaned throughout the night. As the ice thickened, the sound deepened. We waited nearly a week before the popping, before popping the big question to Dad. What do you think that big question is going to be? Um, what do you think, Jenna? That, that, why would he not go in the water? Maybe. That's a good one. Everyone have a different one? What do you think, Sarah? Um... I forgot. Okay, let's keep going. Or do you want to go ice 
All right, so here are his kids, Jackie Robinson's kids and the neighbors, the neighbor kids. We found dad sitting by the fireplace reading the newspaper. A hot fire crackled and hissed in the background. We want to go ice skating, we all shouted together. He looked up into our six eager faces. What did your mother say, he asked. She said we could, as long as you come along with us. Dad looked anxious. It's below freezing, he reminded us. Then the ice should be good and frozen and safe for us, Jackie Jr. said. Yeah, strong enough to hold even you, David chimed in. Please, Mr. Robinson, Candy and Willie pleaded together. Christy and I want to practice making figure eights. Do you know what a figure eight is when you're ice skating? Oh, yeah. You're just skating in the shape of an eight. Well, I've got figure eight. Dad smiled proudly. So, it's figure eight today, is it? I beamed. Yes, Daddy. We've been practicing in our socks on the floor. Well, in that case, he added, hiding sheepishly behind his newspaper, I guess we should go ice skating. So they're going to go out ice skating. The mad scramble began. We all ran from room to room, looking for dad's gloves, hat, and coat. Then we stood in front of dad's chair, pleading, making funny faces, hurry up, giving hand signals until he finally put down his newspaper. Very slowly, he pulled on one giant black rubber boot and then the other. When dad was dressed, he reluctantly led the way. We marched behind him, pushing him as we walked out the sliding glass door down the back stairs and down the hill to the frozen lake. When we reached the lake, Dad turned to us and said, Wait! Jackie, David, Candy, Willie, Christy, and I came to an abrupt halt. Then he ran to the house and returned with a shovel and a broomstick. Hmm. So they go ice skating on. He's going to make sure it's, it's, it's hard enough so oh. they can go. So he's going to use those tools, the shovel and the broomstick? Let's see if you're right. As we lined up along the lake's edge, Dad eased onto the snow-covered ice. See him going? He has the broomstick. So it looks like you're probably right. Dad, be careful, I shouted. Don't fall in, David screamed. I grabbed Christy's mitten hand and squeezed it. What's wrong, she whispered. I'm scared, I replied, as the reality suddenly hit me. My dad can't swim. Jackie Jr. twisted the cord attached to his sled. David, Candy, and Willie stepped closer to the edge of the lake. Dad went further out onto the frozen lake. The ice crackled beneath his feet. He took another step. Then he cleared the snow from his path with the shovel. From the cleared spot, he was able to tell how thick the ice was. Before he placed one big foot in front of the other, he tapped the ice with the broomstick, testing it for its weakness or cracks. Tap, tap. Dad took a few more steps forward. Tap, tap. Then he took a few more steps. But just as he was about to pronounce the ice was safe, boom! What do you think happened? He fell, he fell down. down. A terrible noise roared from below the ice. Dad! I screeched. I was sure the ice was going to open up and swallow him up. Jackie Jr. stood ready to shove the sled to help Dad. David, Candy, and Willie inch closer to my brother. We waited for what seemed like an hour. Uh oh, do you think he fell in? Are we gonna find out? Yeah. Let's quick. Oh, it was just an air bubble. My dad called to us. The sound moved down the lake. So I didn't know an air bubble could make that kind of sound. Do you know that? I didn't know that. Dad took a few more steps, tapping as he moved to the deepest part of the lake. He stopped, gave one last tap with the stick, then turned to us and called, It's safe! Put on your skates! 
look at this picture. I love it. We cheered as loudly as we could and we skated circles around dad as we walked back onto the solid ground. All I could think was, my dad is the bravest man alive. Now, how is his dad so brave just now what happened when he was on the ice? Why did they think his dad was so brave? What do you think, Sarah? Uh, because he never wanted to go in the, in the lake, but now he finally did to test the ice yeah. to make the kids safe. That's right. And do you remember why? Why didn't he want to ever go in the lake or walk on there? Do you remember, Bobby? Why didn't Jackie Robinson never want to go in the water or walk on the ice? I forget. Okay, what do you think? Do you, there was a little part of the story because that... Because he can't swim. Yes, he can't swim. And do you think that's scary, to go into yeah. water and you don't know how to swim? I think that would be really scary. And then to walk on the ice, and then if the ice broke and he fell in, would he be able to swim back to safety? Yeah. Now years have passed, and we understand even more how much courage it took for my father to step out on that ice. In fact, dad showed the same courage on the ice that day as he did when he broke the color barrier in baseball. No one really knew what would happen, but he felt his way along an untried path. So he's, remember when Mr. Ricky said, you know, they're not going to be kind to you. We've never had a black man play baseball. And now he took that courage and he's like, all right, I'm going to go and play. Maybe this will open the door for other black players. And did it? Yeah. When we look at baseball today, yeah. do we see lots there's of tons. players of all different yeah, races and, and colors? And yes. Yeah, like black and brown and yes. even white. All kinds of players, all kinds of people can play all sports, not just baseball, football, basketball, all kinds. And it doesn't matter your skin color is black or brown, all that matters is that you're a kind person inside. I love how you said that again, because that's absolutely right. It's who we are inside. Let's see. That was Jackie Robinson, and that was my dad. Big, heavy, out there alone on the lake, testing the ice to be sure it was safe for us. And he did it, even though he couldn't swim. <laughs> Wow, I bet your dads do things like that for you, right? My dad can't even swim either. No, but I bet your dad wants to do things to keep you safe, right? Yeah. Just like Jackie Robinson. So I hope you will remember and maybe be courageous like Jackie Robinson, right? And maybe try things that are kind of hard and that, you know, might be a little uncomfortable, but it might change the world like it's been changing, like it's changed today, right? Yeah. And there's so many other wonderful books out there for you to read at, from, at the library. Mm -hmm. Um, that have to do with famous black Americans for Black History Month in February. Great. I hope you enjoyed this story today. Did you? You've been an amazing audience. And thank you to my audience at home. I hope you enjoyed our story. And I hope you'll come and watch another Calling All Kids. Take care. Bye-bye.